Many of you have probably noticed that Navi's coverage is weird. Uh, in my opinion, really weird, actually. You have reviews like Cortex and Hardware Unboxed praising Navi heavily, saying excellent price performance, greater performance than we expected. And yet you have some other channels acting like Navi isn't good enough. Yet their numbers are the same. In fact, and I'm not trying to single out this channel, but I have to pick one as an example. Hardware Canucks ends their review with something like, you just can't ignore what NVIDIA has to offer. AMD has a lot of catching up to do. Okay, I'm looking at the results. Uh, what catching up to do? I'm seeing a 2560 stream processor graphics card from Radeon. Uh, beating, if not tying, if you're being nice, the 2070 Super. In fact, actually, the RTX 2080 <laughs> with more shaders than the RDNA card. A and keep in mind, I'm looking at minimum frame rates here. That's what really matters. It's, it's tying the 2070 Super, but I guess it beats the 2080 in averages. And if we go over to Hardware Canucks, uh, actually, I would say this looks even better because... The minimum is now a good solid 5% or more stronger than the 2070 Supers. And it's right up there next to the 2080. Okay, well, what if I pull a couple of other random results? All right, well, okay, it's still, you know, pretty close to the Super beating the Bone Stock 2070. And let's look at Metro Exodus, also right up there next to the 2070 Super. And again, most importantly, only about 10-15% behind the 2080 guys with more shaders. And this is all while costing $100 less on a much smaller die and not compromising image quality, which this link will be in the description from Tech yes City. Yeah, NVIDIA's gimping little things all over the picture to get those higher frame rates with as many or more shaders. If you look at the numbers, the actual results, and ignore the noise, Navi is impressive. So what's going on? How are some people coming to these ridiculously different conclusions well, looking at the same numbers. And honestly, a lot of you can probably guess what's going on. Let's actually take a step back and talk about the two people I mentioned, or should I say the two channels I mentioned that are regarding Navi well. Well, first up, I mentioned Cortex, and this guy made a name for himself not doing tons of reviews, but talking about the industry as he sees it. He will throw shade at AMD, NVIDIA, Apple, Intel, whenever he sees fit. He is no one's servant. He says what he wants to when he wants to say it. He'll do a review here and there, it seems, when he can, but he clearly doesn't care if a company dislikes him. And then, of course, we also have Hardware Unboxed. Oh yeah, aren't these guys on NVIDIA's shit list now for just completely crapping on DLSS, and rightfully so, by the way? Yeah, actually, I remember they have to buy a lot of their NVIDIA cards now because NVIDIA's not too happy with them. Hmm. So, I'm not really being subtle anymore, am I? You guys know what I'm hinting at, and it's the type of stuff you guys have heard about NVIDIA doing in the background time and time Again, I'm not at liberty to share any proof, but it's out there. NVIDIA's behind the scenes pulling strings as usual. Um, I, I can't directly point any fingers. Uh, there's a couple people I know who have more info than I do, actually. But I, I, you guys got to know you're not crazy. There's a reason we're seeing such bipolar viewpoints from different channels here. And that's... NVIDIA's scared shitless of Navi, and they're doing the type of stuff a lot of you are aware they have done in the past. Again, NVIDIA's at work. And that brings me to the second part of this video. Actually, what the entire subject of the video was supposed to be before I received some more information about what's actually going on this morning. The point of this video really is, why? Why is NVIDIA so scared of Navi because I've seen Cortex talk about it and maybe a couple other people, but everyone seems to just kind of look at Navi and go, yeah, that's better than GCM. NVIDIA has nothing to be worried about. 
But I actually think they do. I actually think NVIDIA's never been more scared of an AMD lineup in their life. And let's go over why. Obviously, I'm going to get the things we've already talked about out of the way, just to sum it all up. AMD has matched Turing's IPC. It's obvious. Same clock speeds, uh, same amount of shaders, outputting the same amount of frames. And they're doing so on a die that's much smaller. And let's be very, very clear about this. The RX 5700 XT is almost matching the 2070 Super. The same amount of stream processors are in that graphics card from NVIDIA. And even if you were to die shrink it, AMD got a th around 33% space savings by moving from 12 nanometer to 7. And so... If NVIDIA did the same, let's say they even got a 40% die shrink, TU-104 would still be around 30% bigger than Navi 10. 30% larger, even on 7 nanometer. And I, even if they theoretically got that 100% increase in density, they cut the die size in half, it would still be about the same size. And by the way, the only reason AMD got higher clock speeds out of Vega 20 is because they didn't cut the die size in half. They left extra space to clock it higher. So if NVIDIA did that, they would lose a lot of clock speed. Okay, so they mashed IPC on a smaller die in a legitimately smaller die, not just a smaller because of 7 nanometer die, yeah, RDNA is really impressive, and it's only 10 to 15 percent behind the 2080 now. When it's using GCN instruction sets, it's not even using its full capabilities. It's practically using beta drivers to run this code. Legacy instructions. They have entirely new methods of running these cards that they haven't even started yet. And by the end of next year, they will have the full support of people programming for next-gen consoles on RDNA to take full advantage. So there's really about only a year, year and a half before RDNA starts aging like I believe the 7970 did, taking off more than anyone expected. And NVIDIA is probably not going to get to Samsung 7 nanometer until the end of next year, maybe even early 2021. So that's very worrisome. But, and this brings me to the final point, NVIDIA has been at war with the superior architecture before. Let us not forget Kepler and really, more importantly, Fermi and Tesla. Vastly inferior architectures to what AMD had at the time. They've been able to fight it before with mindshare, backroom deals, uh, just tons of marketing. But and what I really think, and this is really the key to the video, what I really think's keeping Jensen up at night is that he knows it might not work this time. And the reason it might not work is, of course, AMD's mindshare has never been anywhere near as powerful as it is right now. And don't click away. I'm not going to say the same stuff I've said before. Although I do have to highlight that really every time Radeon's done well, it's because of their CPU releases. People build a system around a CPU, and you can see the CPU markers on this chart. And then Radeon takes market share as a result. But in the past 15 years, there has never been a time as great as this for AMD to market their products together. I mean, really think about it. How far back can you go? Ryzen 1000, where their marketing was basically, it's a better deal for the same performance in games as Intel. Or if you even go back to Phenom 2, it's basically the same thing. Just saying, we're a better deal and we have the same performance and efficiency as Intel. No, now it's just being heralded as the option. Almost every tech channel is saying, AMD, that's who you buy now. Ignore Intel until they get their shit together. And this will cause double takes. That's really what I want to emphasize with this video. This isn't going to cause people to go, AMD sounds good. I'll look at their graphics cards too. They'll say, AMD is regarded as a market leader now. 
I really should look at everything else they're making, and I think people will do a double take in the review and actually look at the numbers themselves. I think for the past 10 or 15 years, people have simply, as with all products people buy, they skip to the conclusion and then blindly buy whatever they were told to buy. Not always, not all of you, but I come on, we all do it. But AMD's regarded so well, if there's even a lukewarm reception, I think NVIDIA's terrified that people will just look at the numbers themselves and go, lukewarm? What are you talking about? It's as strong as the 2070 Super while costing $100 less. I got to get this graphics card. And so I really do think that NVIDIA is doing more than they have in the past few years, it's not just the marketing that can get people. They need to make sure that some of these tech channels are just regurgitating, reminding you about NVIDIA's features, no matter how stupid some of them are, because they're really, really scared about people hearing a conclusion that doesn't sound bad and switching over to the numbers and doing their own research. NVIDIA is afraid of the double take. And that's why they're up to these shenanigans. And I do think they have very good reason to be scared. They really do. Now, I have to end this video with one last word to the tech channels out there. I, I, I am confident in what I've been made aware of today. So I, know, I do know it's going on. I'm not directly accusing any of you, though. Don't just think that I saw your review and it's like, blah, blah, blah. I don't like you because of what you said, so I'm making this stuff up. If you are not doing anything shady and you came to a conclusion, then just ignore... Don't, don't include yourself in this open heart-to-heart, -heart, right? But I know some of you have clearly allowed nvidia to bully you a little bit uh, i just some of you are and i know these companies are scary and they can do a lot of things to make your life harder and the way you probably would rationalize this if i were to rationalize it would be well if i go to war with this mega corporation all the good work i want to do for my subscribers will be made that much harder so what's the point in fighting this here's what i'll do i will try to walk a tightrope where i make sure nvidia isn't pissed at me but i also try to portray navi as best i can or perhaps because this had to have happened with at least one channel for me to know this Maybe I'll just leak what's going on in the background to smaller tech channels like, I don't know, Moore's Law is Dead and others. And because they're smaller and they have nothing to lose, hopefully they'll fight the good fight for me and I just won't comment on it. And then, you know, maybe everything will work out in the end. Clearly, at least one channel thinks that's what you got to do. But I don't know. What I do know is that if you want the world to change, you have to build the new world you want to live in yourself. Nobody is going to do it for you. Oh, and one more thing to just the people watching this video uh, on YouTube. A lot of my videos get ten to 30,000 views. Uh, I even have a couple that are around 40,000 or higher. Yet I have like 9,700 subscribers as of this recording. Seems like at least half of you are watching most of my videos but haven't subscribed yet. Maybe subscribe. Don't worry, I'm not going to betray your subscription. I won't spam you with a bunch of gaming videos like 10 in a day. And I'm not going to turn into a hot knife cutting channel overnight. Don't worry. If you're watching more than a one or two of my videos, subscribe, guys. Come on. Also, please share this video. I think I'm probably one of the first people talking about these shenanigans going on again, and I do think people should know about it outside of my personal gain. So, you know, uh, share. And then, of course, the the normal yada, yada, yada. Like it if you don't. If you don't like it, I don't know, piss on my head. And if you want to talk to me about this video on Discord afterwards, you can support me on Patreon. And there's a lot of lively people there talking. All right. Thank you. <laughs>